Oh, hello. Baseball. It's one of the most popular sports in America. It's been played since the 19th century and has remained a significant part of American culture up to the modern day. The players, the logos, the teams, they're all recognizable in the US and around the world. And of the best and most well-known baseball teams were the 1927 New York Yankees. It was a team that included Hall of Famers and legends like Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, and they would go on to win the 1927 World Series. And New York City at the time was the commercial and media capital of the world. The 20s were also host to radio, weird trends like pole sitting, Charles Lindbergh, bootlegging, and baseball. So I wanted to explore what it would actually be like to witness a game played by the legendary New York Yankees during this time period. So without further ado, I'd like to present an idea of you going to the ballpark to watch one of the greatest teams in sports, the 1927 New York Yankees. You could have gone to a Yankee game on any day, but let's just say you decided to go on August 31st, 1927, when the Boston Red Sox were traveling to the Yankee Stadium to play the New York Yankees. The original stadium was known as the Yankee Stadium until the 1950s. It was also referred to as the house that Ruth built, which was coined by the journalist Fred Lieb. It was located in the Bronx, New York, on East 161st Street and River Avenue in New York City. So you're going to either walk there in your suit, jacket, and hat, or your dress or blouse and skirt and hat, or you could also drive, maybe in your tin Lizzie, or take a taxi, bus, or a subway that would stop at 161st Street. Before entering the stadium, you could probably grab a bite to eat at a nearby drugstore. You would then enter one of the ticket booths, either buy a ticket or redeem your ticket from a prior rainout. If you were buying a ticket, bleacher seats were 50 cents while the grandstands were $1.10. Then after that, you would walk into that massive stadium. The actual stadium looked like the Colosseum in Rome, and it kind of looked like a horseshoe too. And when you walked in, you would notice the three-tiered seating made of concrete, which was developed from Thomas Edison, and steel. And at the top of all this was the recognizable frieze, giving a majestic aura for the stadium. And this was located behind home plate and extended up to the baselines. The lower deck continued until it met the blue wooden bleachers behind the outfield fence. And scattered throughout the stadium were eight bathrooms for men and eight for women. The manual scoreboard was located beyond the bleachers in right center field in front of the subway tracks, and it featured scores of other ball games around the league. The architectural firm who designed the Yankee Stadium was Osborne Engineering, who also designed other famous sports venues like Fenway Park and Notre Dame Stadium. The construction of Yankee Stadium was done by White Construction Company as well. The ballpark became the first to have three tiers of seating consisting of 58,000 seats, but a couple thousand more could sneak in. On the field, of course, you notice the beautiful grass with the sand and the bases, and some other features on the infield were that the base lines went beyond home plate, there was a dirt pathway between home and the mound, and there was a flagpole in the left center field that was in fair ball territory. The Yanks dugout was dark green and on the third base side, and bats would be lined up on top of the dugout stairs. And the Yanks bullpen was in left center, and there was a warning track as well. Advertisements included Ever Ready Shaving Brushes in left center, and Razors in right center. Yankee Stadium at the time was the only one known as a stadium, and not a field, park, or ground. The Yanks did used to play in the ground though, which was called the Polo Grounds. But they came to the Bronx after the Giants, the owners, kicked them out for being too popular of a team. The Yanks would move to the Yankee Stadium in 1923, which was only located a half mile away from the polo grounds. And a big reason why the Yankees were so popular, and probably a big reason why one would even show up to the Yankee Stadium in 1927, was to see Babe Ruth. You see, Ruth was known as this outgoing, larger-than-life character. He would hit these high-flying home runs during the game, hang out with fans after the game, and then just party at night. He had signed a three-year, $210,000 contract before the 27th season began. Ruth and Lou Buster Garrick were actually competing for the home run title at this time. In fact, the bleachers in right center were referred to as Ruthville or Garrickville. 
The average attendance of the 1927 was 15,000, all expecting to see big hits and home runs. And interestingly enough, baseball and the Babe were not the only reasons people in the 20s would flock to Yankee Stadium. Boxing and college football were also held here too. And baseball games were in the afternoon, usually at 3.30 p.m and it would start with the Star Spangled Banner being played. You would hear the batters announced over megaphone. The batters did not go in and out of the box as they do today, and balls anywhere near the plate was a strike. As a result, baseball games were generally quicker than they are today. And fans were hooting, hollering, cheering, and jeering, and if you sat in the bleachers, chances are there was more yelling uh, and more knowledge about the players in the game. You would also hear concession boys just going through the aisles or you would just smell food from food stands in the park making you want to eat something. They had hot dogs, peanuts, ice cream, bottled drinks, beer, all up for grabs and sold by the concession business of Harry M. Stevens who also sold scorecards. Players wore no helmets when batting, just their hats, and there were no numbers on the back of their uniforms until the Yankees did this in the 1929 season. So now that the game is starting, let's look at the two teams. The first team to hit was the Boston Red Sox, and here's the batting order. You had Jack Rothrock leading off, and another interesting thing to note about this batting order is with the number 8 and the number 9 hitters. You see, Phil Hoppin was the former Yankee, and Red Ruffing would be a future Yankee as well as a future Hall of Famer. On a cloudy afternoon, you had this Yankees defense facing the Boston hitters. So you had Babe Ruth in right field and Lou Gehrig at first base. And here was the batting order for the Yankees. The first six would be known as Murderer's Row, with four out of the six of Murderer's Row becoming future Hall of Famers. And to face the Murderer's Row as well as the barrage of home runs and hits was this Red Sox defense with the future Yankee Red Ruffing on the mound. And due to the racist Major League Baseball color barrier, there was an understanding that no players of black African descent would play in Major League Baseball, yet this would end in 1947. Women also did not play in the Major Leagues, but rather in non-professional college or work leagues. It did seem though, based on photographs and videos of the stands, that the seats in Yankee Stadium were really open to whomever could pay for them. I also have to mention that you would notice the Yankee manager Miller Huggins serving his 10th year as the Yanks manager. Huggins took the Yanks to the World Series last year in 1926, but they lost after Babe Ruth was caught stealing second base. The Yanks had not won the World Series since 1923, which was their first World Series win ever. That game on a Wednesday afternoon on August 31st, 1927 was a joy to watch. You had home runs by Tony Lazeri and of course... Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth had actually stolen a base, it was his fourth of the season. Mark Koenig had stolen home as well for a run, and the Yankees would eventually put up 10 runs in that game, uh, finishing the day with 10-3, Yankees won the game. When the game was over, usually fans would leave, but some would smartly stay at the end because they knew that Babe Ruth was usually the last to leave, so many kids and fans would swarm the exit gates for an autograph. A monument dedicated to manager Miller Huggins was erected in 1932 after Huggins' death. This area became known as Monument Park, which was actually in fair ball territory in center field. Later the monuments of Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and then many others would be put up. Well, that's going to be it for me. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you next time.